Take 47. Take 47. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. Craig Johnson here. Welcome to this episode of Whiskey and Weapons. Today, we're going to be talking about the value of some of these scientific tests we've been trying to do of weapons versus armor. And this was spurred by a video we made what, last week, I guess, where we were uh, using a, rond a rondel dagger, this one, to see how much it went through chainmail. And it just so happens that our friends uh, Matt Easton and uh, Todd were doing a similar video, and a bunch of uh, comments have noted that we got really different results. And we thought this is an excellent opportunity to talk about the variety of parameters uh, when we do these kinds of really experimental archaeology yeah. uh, videos and what they tell us and what they don't. So, first of all, we've got a Glenfiddich 14-year uh, uh, bourbon barrel reserve that we can drink to uh, mm, loosen Activate up. Activate the thought process. Exactly. Here we go. Little mental lubrication, as it were. Exactly. Cheers, Craig. Cheers, Cheers friends. Cheers, Cheers friends. Matt and Todd. Good Matt video. Todd. It was sweet. <laughs> Fill up a glass and join us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, At 14 years in a bourbon barrel. Nice. Ooh. Smooth. It don't suck a lot. No. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so we're watching a. Uh, uh, Todd's video, mm -hmm. right, where they're using his dagger, uh, the replica of the one from the Wallace collection, and how it uh, cut through that that chain mail, mm -hmm. right? We're thinking, all right, we've had some really different results, Definitely. right? You'll recall previous videos where we've busted a bunch of armor, right, from this nice hardened pal pauldron from our buddy Josh Davis at Davis Reproductions that... Various weapons have eventually destroyed somewhat uh, to this piece of mail, which is a scrap from my harness set uh, that we've tried to stab a bunch of times. And one of the things we found is that it's remarkably difficult to stab through this mail. Mm -hmm. right? This is an important uh, factor here. Yeah. So, like, well, and especially when we're looking at it as a data point, uh, talking about the historical. Period mail varied enormously from, you know, very small rings, especially later on, to pieces that are similar to that sizing, different construction methods. The materials they're made from, most of it would have been iron. Uh, you're drawing and uh, making wrought wire that is then producing the mail. And that particular material is going to have different working aspects than something that's got the carbon in it and possibly could be hardened. Uh, even in 3227A, when the section before the uh, martial arts section talks about you know making different weapons and tools harder and softer and it actually mentions mail in there. Um, so those kind of things are gonna come into that. Now, um, we haven't seen the popping of rings like Matt and Todd did. Uh, I have no uh, doubt that they were doing that absolutely and have popped rings on other pieces of mail that we've been working with, whether it's riveted or not. Mm -hmm. uh, but this piece we haven't. We've had deformation of rings, but not that pop or that cutting through. Right. Um, and I think some of that may be the excellent shape that uh, Todd's got on his blade. If you look at that particular dagger, it's got that hollow ground with the diamond back edge, which uh, probably gives it a very excellent purchase against the ring itself, where our dagger is designed with just a flat uh, bevel from the back edge to the front. Uh, they probably have relatively similar dimensions at the point where they're starting to do that to the male, but uh, maybe that hollow grind gives you an advantage. It's possible, it's certainly possible. And it's certainly the case that different pieces of male behave differently. 
right? So this one, when I was stabbing it with spears, all kinds of stuff, putting my whole body force behind it, it uh, yeah, it's deforming rings, but typically not cutting through them. Yeah. Uh, here, we've got several pieces of mail from the Oakshot Institute collection. So here's a piece of historical riveted mail that Ewart uh, Oakshot collected, uh, that he bequeathed to the Oakshot collection. I'll include a close-up photo of this alongside the mail I was using uh, for our test. This mail is much finer. Uh, the wires, half the diameter in the hole, inside the rings is probably three quarters of the size. This here oh, is another historical shirt of uh, mail that has, what, these are pinch welds, you think? So must be iron. All of these rings, they're round and they're pinch welded uh, together. Obviously, I'm not going to do tests on 500-year-old shirts of mail. And then this one, what's that guy, Craig? Uh, this is a uh, real fine wire, uh, probably 20 gauge wire. Uh, it's butted, but it was from a avon tail or a helmet neck, but you can see it's real fine. Uh, probably wouldn't stop a big heavy spike coming through it, but it's, you know, of period and designed to participate in that armored combat, so. Oh yeah, and it'd um, stop a cut. Yeah, it would sure. definitely stop a cut. Uh -huh. um, and that's the other aspect of this is, when you place a weapon and armor in a combat situation, how effective the blow landing can be compared to us doing, you know, our push tests and our stab while we get to, you know, get our lower centers of gravity going for <laughs> us and uh, try and punch through it. Um, as, you, as you'll see in the little bit at the beginning, you know, the 18 gauge steel, we did get a hole through it, uh, but we didn't get the penetration like Matt and Todd did. And again, whether that's the blade of the dagger or the difference maybe in the 18 gauge of mild steel that Todd has compared to us. Mm -hmm. Those things are always um, difficult to gauge unless you've got side by side, everything matched up. Mm -hmm. uh, now, it'd be really interesting and definitely something we'll think about for the future mm -hmm. is you get, you know, the different dagger shapes that you find in the, in the traditional systems mm -hmm. and put them all together out of the same material against the same target and mm -hmm. see if you get differences in penetration due to the shape of the blade. Sure. That would be an excellent test, very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, something that's hard to gauge, you know, without having either very advanced physics knowledge of penetration of sure. things through targets. Uh, but that's, uh, that's an, an interesting idea. thing too. Is yeah. like, uh, yeah, we've had some questions that people have been like, "Well, aren't rondel rondel daggers always triangular, or aren't they always hollow branching?" No, there's actually there's a huge variety. Yeah. of historical weapon shapes. And honestly, we don't know exactly what these shapes were for. Some of it was no doubt personal preference, some of it was fashion, some of it was probably weird fiction. Or, and, you're, uh, or you're designing to take advantage or uh, compensate for the material that you're using. Right, yeah. Many medieval dagger blades of this form will have very, very thick back spines. Mm -hmm. This is just a quarter inch thick or so at the at the max mm -hmm. uh, because we're working from a stock material for our stock Rondell blade. Sure. Uh, Todd's obviously goes thicker because he's uh, marrying it to the, the original. Um, mm -hmm. In Dublin, some of the, the mm -hmm. uh, daggers they have there that were probably more for combat daggers for guys fighting in light armor, if any armor at all, uh -huh. but they have the back edge of the knife is three eighths to almost half inch. Sure. So it would be much more of like a spike sure. coming down to a point with three sides than a blade with a heavy back edge. Sure. Um, you know, so you, you have all these things going into the design and structure of how that thing penetrates as it goes through and 
what are those factors included mm -hmm. as you're doing it as a design and as a craftsman making the piece? Oh yeah, yeah, totally. And another issue is the kind of metal that they were making these things out of mm -hmm. historically, where if they had something that's a half an inch wide, it's probably iron. Probably. Right? Yeah, but because, it might be carburizing the edge, carburizing the tip. Yeah. It may be a steel. Yeah. Um, it's probably not a high carbon steel. Sure. Or something as a sidearm. Um, you know, those the better materials are going to be put into the higher end sword blades and the higher end customers. Sure. Uh, especially like in Dublin, I doubt those were the daggers made for the elite of the elite. Right. And so uh, you're going to have maybe them compensating with a heavy iron blade with just a carburized edge to it. Sure. Um, so it's, you know, how do those functions all work out in the context of the historical combat situation? Mm -hmm. So lots well, of variables. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One of the cool things we found that I want to just call uh, Tom up or email him um, is how he's found triangular or square blades interacting with these denser fabric armors. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we found, so this is the two dozen layers of quilted linen, and this thing has proved remarkably resistant to spikes, right? Things that are pointy, but not necessarily super sharp really get bound up in the cloth and don't go through it. So things that are pretty good at breaking mail, and these spikes seem not to go through this cloth very well, but things that are good at going through the cloth, like a sharp edged dagger, seem not very good at going through mail, which I think is part of the, these layering um, techniques and it's part yeah. of the choices of the tests that we do too. For example, when I was wearing that mail shirt with just my regular gambeson under it, right? So that is a, you know, it's a modern gambeson that, you know, it's probably several layers of linen with a bunch of batting in it. Yeah. This dagger just goes right through it. But if my arming garment had been made of these 24 layers of linen, it really would have had very little effect trying to grind that into my armpit. Mm -hmm. At the same time, if I have 24 layers of linen in my armpit, it's a little harder running into battle to move to. <laughs> <laughs> Another aspect to think about too is you know what's behind the target. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're using the old Everlast bag that we found in the alleyway to you know represent human body. Uh, Todd and, and Matt were using the port shoulder and then the backing for the for the archery. Mm -hmm. uh, which is a nice solid material, which gives you a real firm. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we did the little test at the beginning on a really dense foam to kind of replicate some of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, you know, that target is, is technically supposed to be a human body. It's got soft, it's got hard, it's, you know, how muscular, how fat are you, all those kind of things. How strong is your gut? Yeah, you know, <laughs> gut strength comes into that, that point. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other aspect of that target element is we're all doing this against targets that aren't hitting back. And they're not moving. <laughs> and they're not moving. That's my favorite Bruce Lee quote. <laughs> Boards don't hit back. <laughs> yes. So um, in, in the context of saying how these tests that we do give us information about period combat, you have to be very aware that we are doing this against a stationary target with some give, making some adjustments to try and make it as realistic as possible. Oh yeah. But the target's not trying to kill us back. For sure. And that will alter how you strike and move. Some would say it shouldn't if you're doing everything period wise and have your defenses foremost and all those things. But there is nobody more conservative than somebody who's fighting with sharps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Although that flail test that we did, that thing tried to hit back. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it, you, so we want you guys to, to enjoy the things we're doing, enjoy the demos we're trying to make, yeah. enjoy how we're trying to test these things to give us good information to move forward with everybody's mm -hmm. research. 
but we're we're just data points. You know, we're right. just moments where we're saying, hey, look at this. Uh, we're not trying to say the definitive Rondell Daggers always do this, don't do that. We're not trying to say sharp on sharp edge always does this, always does that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're always striving to make the best piece possible for our customers. Mm -hmm. But in the context of all of this thing, the variables are so many. Oh yeah, so it's, many. It's, and when we're doing these videos, you know, we're trying to, we're choosing questions that we think are interesting. Being yeah. people who have done a bunch of sword fighting, who are making, you know, the best historical replicas that we can based on the extensive knowledge we've built up. And what we're not trying to do when we do these tests is just devise a test that makes our stuff look awesome. Our oh, stuff no. is awesome. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But, you know, we're not trying to just choose something that's going to show our piece stabbing through whatever. And that's, that's to be clear, that's not what Todd is doing either. No. Todd's tests are awesome. Todd, you keep making them. It's great. If you oh, wander yeah. the wilds of the internet, you'll see all kinds of <laughs> dubious claims of <laughs> ridiculousness yeah. going on all over the place. But, uh... But, I think that we have a pretty cool community going on of oh, people testing this stuff right now. Definitely. I've learned more from Todd's videos than a lot of things in my life, and I've been doing this 40-some years. Oh, sure. Um, if before we started doing these tests, you asked both Nathan and I, and we sat down and said, our best guess is we would have probably guessed Rondell's were much more like Todd found mm -hmm. than the way we found in our tests. Yeah, we were both shocked that it's been so hard to get rondel daggers, to get spears yeah, through spears. the mail. Yeah, and uh -huh. you know, we, the, the, the uh, video we referenced in one of our past blog posts about the German guys doing the spear tests and having difficulty and such. Yeah. You know, those are things we've had people come down who are pretty accomplished Western martial arts practitioners or HEMA practitioners uh -huh. and wanting to do the spear test against our mail because they, they are us. sure that <laughs> it's going to go through and then they walk away disappointed. So, sure. um, you know, it's, it's a very, uh, active learning process yeah. for all of us, even though we've been doing this a long time. Oh yeah. The biggest upside is that I have way more confidence in my male shirt <laughs> when I do armored <laughs> combat than if I had bought the shirt that Todd. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but I think they're both just from India. Maybe I just, yeah. I don't know. Maybe some dude was going crazy with the. <laughs> I know. Yeah. The artist. Yeah. Mail that's some hard wire. Well, you did have to buy a, a fancier pinch when you were older. Yes, it, I know. It's it was... funny. Like watching them stab through that, I was like, "Oh my God, how'd you do that?" So to cut this piece of mail off of the shirt. I had my regular, you know, heavy, like good wire clippers. I had to go to the hardware store and get a pair of wire clippers with a foot long handle on them. So I could cut through the rings to separate the sound. So yeah, we should get another, we should yeah, get we'll another, one. another cheap we'll find another piece <laughs> and uh, add that to the repertoire of testing yeah. to kind of go deeper on this. Totally. Yeah. Also, I'll look up who made this. It yeah. was a discontinued shirt on Cult of Athena, Athena a couple mm -hmm. years ago that I bought for 200 bucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe they were making shirts too good. Who knows? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> there you go with the plug, Dave. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Discount shirts from Cult. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll also go through and do some, in a future blog post, do some detailing on the pieces of original mail we have here. Uh, giving you some context and sizing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of the comments we got were like, well, period mail was a da da da. Yes and no. Sure. Um, so the variables, was. the variables, you know, and which date is it Roman mail or 17th century mail? You've got a mm -hmm. huge, long history of that type of armor being used and uh, different varieties and ideas of how to compensate for that. Yeah. Um, and if you were fighting someone in 1480, mm -hmm. right, and you cram your Rondel dagger into their armpit, you have no idea what their mail's like. Yeah, that's <laughs> right? true. I yeah. kind of assume it may go straight through it like butter, or 
you may get a quarter inch of penetration yeah. on the tip. And uh, that must have been an interesting aspect of combat. As, interesting and terrifying. Yeah, as any real martial arts practice will sure. compensate for, the technique will work given parameters. And right. so as you're practicing it, you know, what happens if that doesn't work? What sure. happens if this happens? You're always having to compensate for a situation that is so dynamic, you can't rely on this is always gonna work. Sure. You know? I mean, I think really what we need to do is, Todd and Matt, you guys should probably come over here, check out the Oak Shot collection. Drink some whiskey. Toby is supposed to come over at some point. And yeah, Dr. Capo will be. Yeah. Wonderful to host you. I'll we'll hang out and we'll stab a bunch of shit. Yeah. We'll see. Todd bring a bunch of dares. We'll bring a bunch of dares. Perfect. We'll get a side of cow or beef. Yeah. We'll get the barbecue out. That sounds good to me. Tenderize. <laughs> <laughs> Marinate. Exactly. It'll be perfect. Well, guys, that's our thoughts. This is a super exciting like moment of like interesting stuff going on. Very cool. And yeah. and like we we don't it's not a contest in any way, shape, or form for us. Yeah. We are just happy to be getting this kind of information. And in I mean, dialogue with cool folks who are our friends. Yeah, I spent nice. decades trying to find references to anything about this in a book or an art, uh, uh, academic paper or anything, and then you would find something that maybe touched on it, maybe. Hutton said something once. Yes, yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 So anyway, it's, uh... We all know what Hutton says. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. See you next time. That whiskey's good. That whiskey's very good. <clears throat>